Just a couple of weeks ago, I did an episode about how I thought that the current golden age of AI might be on the wane. Interestingly enough, yesterday I saw a video where Kathy Wood of ARK Invest said just the opposite. So I wanted to do an episode where I examined who might be right about that. I guess it's Dr. Know-It-All versus Kathy Wood. For those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks, and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200, and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $1,600. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. So first of all, you should probably start with like watching my episode if you haven't watched it yet. I'll do the TLDW here really, really fast, but I go into a lot more detail about the reasons why in that episode. So you might wanna pause this video, watch that one, and then come back and watch this one. But basically my two contentions were, number one, that energy costs were getting very, very high for the rewards that we were getting, and number two, and more importantly, was that the sort of democratization of AI research was ending. And that was a big potential problem for the future of AI. So cool, that's my stance on the issue. What did Kathy Wood have to say? Well, let's watch a couple of quick video clips. Artificial intelligence training costs are dropping 68% per year. Think about that. Yeah, right. We've never seen anything like that. And artificial intelligence is starting really a technology war. Uh, the companies with the biggest pools of data, the highest quality data, the best AI expertise, with the best domain expertise in the genomic space, you know, curing disease and here's the incentive, you know, so the human being has, right. to, have, has to set the goal and uh, the reward system, uh, but the machine's now just training itself. Uh, and those costs are dropping 68% per year. AI is gonna be a part of every industry, and, and that's not the only one. DNA sequencing is deflationary, robotics is de deflationary, uh, blockchain deflationary, it's taking all the middlemen out of the equation. Massive deflation, which is going to hurt companies who haven't spent enough on innovation. We were assuming that in the next 10 years, artificial intelligence would, be, would deliver, in the enterprise software space, would deliver a market cap opportunity of $30 trillion, okay? From, from tens of billions today. Our new number is 80 trillion. Uh, and from tens of billions today. So we think that is the big new frontier, but it's going to be in transportation, autonomous taxi technology, autonomous trucks, drones, and so forth. It is in genomics, and so it's going to make these uh, platforms come alive and evolve much faster than even we thought was possible. Right. This 30 trillion was a two year ago number. Now Which we're up to- Now that's double. Now we're or, uh, that's almost triple. Sure. We think one of the most interesting opportunities out there that is in the value space is biotech and maybe some pharma. Uh, those companies that we see uh, em embracing the convergence between and among DNA sequencing, artificial intelligence, and CRISPR gene editing, gene therapies generally, uh, we're very interested in because the returns on their R&D investment in the last 20 years have dropped, this is on average for the industry, from 20% to 7%. Uh, we believe with especially artificial intelligence, trial failures will uh, reduce. There will be a yeah. reduction by at least 25%. Could be a lot more. The time to market could be 25% less. And so we could go back to the golden age. Now, not every, not every company is embracing these, but those who are, and Pfizer, with some of its move into, moves into base editing, uh, where has, is intriguing us here, as is Regeneron and, and Vertex. So as you just heard, Kathy Wood, who represents ARK Invest, and if you don't know ARK Invest, they are, they, they pretty much are, they've made the news a lot. They talk about disruptive innovation in a lot of different sectors. And their one index fund, ARK Q, is all about AI as a disruptive influence in the commercial sector. So anyway, just a few months ago, ARK Invest thought that the upside or the potential market cap for the AI industry in, in general was about $30 trillion. And now they've increased it to $80 trillion, which is 
is an amazing amount of money, right? <laughs> so if you're thinking about that, essentially what Kathy Wood is saying is that artificial intelligence is going to integrate itself into our lives in so many ways that it's going to become an essential industry and in pretty much like, you know, everything. So as people have often said, Artificial intelligence is going to be the oil of the 21st century. So as the oil was to the 20th century, right, everything kind of grew up around oil and other energy sources to a lesser degree, but certainly oil, I guess, coal and natural gas as well. But that was the main focus of the 20th century. It also caused several wars to happen. And what they're saying now is that AI, artificial intelligence, is going to be that same sort of thing in the 21st century. So oil and other things are becoming less important, of course, with the advent of EVs. That's obvious because you can power EVs not just with traditional types of energy, but with green energy and so forth. So it becomes less and less important to have oil and fossil fuels available, more important to start thinking about EVs as a green energy source. And of course, we can also power our grid in that way as well. So oil and fossil fuels are on the decline. What's taking its place right now is computing power and very specifically machine learning or artificial intelligence. So how can the two of us disagree so radically on all of this? Well, my contentions were that we see AI kind of go in cycles since the 1950s with the first, you know, main golden age of artificial intelligence that people thought at that time, sort of like fusion energy, they thought in 10 or 20 years that we were going to have robots around that could do the work, we could talk to them, they would be very, very intelligent in the sense that a human being is. That did not come to pass. Then we had another wave, you know, in the 80s that sort of happened and then it waned as well. And, you know, again, they were like predicting that in 10 to 15 years, we were going to see these assistants that were essentially human being level intelligence. That didn't come to pass. And now since the 20, early 2010s or so, so about the last decade, we've seen a gigantic rise in artificial intelligence and predictions again that we are going to have human level general artificial intelligence within the next, you know, 10 years or something. So the the problem with that contention is that we're seeing sort of a, a law of diminishing returns right now, which is that the amount of computing power is getting really, really big for less and less gains. So at the beginning of this you know, thing in like 2011, 2012, you see a small increase in computing power and a large increase in the amount of actual work that we can get done. And as the decade has gone on, it's gone less and less so. At least that was my contention. And I was saying that we were seeing you know, the law of diminishing returns meant that we were going to have a kind of another retrenchment period in artificial intelligence. What Kathy Wood and ARK Invest say instead is that what we're seeing is an exponential decline in the amount of money it costs to do a specific task. So for example, classifying a billion images has gone down to like three cents as opposed to thousands of dollars a decade ago. So right, that, that kind of decrease is incredible. But I think what that covers up is how much compute power is necessary to get to that stage. So I guess analogously, this would be like saying, look, I can go out and I can spend $1,000 on a new iPhone 13, and it only costs $1,000 to have this you know, incredible cutting edge bionic computing chip inside of it and all of this memory and other things like that. And of course you can get other phones for even cheaper than that. So you look at that and you say like, wow, it's incredible how cheap this technology is. What you're ignoring is trillions upon trillions upon trillions of dollars that have gone in over the decades into manufacturing, into research, you know, into all of this stuff that's been going on since the 1960s at a major, major clip in order to make this happen. So there's a little bit of a hidden thing. When you say it only costs three cents to classify this many images, what you're actually saying here is that it currently costs that little to do that you're not taking account of what's gone before that and you're not taking account of the infrastructure that's had to be built to be able to do this. And of course, if we look at full self-driving, which I've done several videos on, you can check those out if you're interested. But if you look at that as an industry, you can see that it is getting really, really close to happening. But at the same time, when people say it's like super close to happening, they make it sound like it's sort of come out of thin air. There's not a lot of really taking account of the amount of cost involved. So what's happening is of course that Tesla has geniusly shifted the cost onto us consumers. So we're paying 50 or $60,000 for a car in order to give them information. That's part of what's going on. Part of that deal is that we are driving billions of miles collectively and we're giving that to Tesla. So Tesla, as opposed to having to pay, say it costs them 
$40,000 to build a car on average, right? Instead of having to put out a fleet of a million cars at $40,000 per car, they're actually making a profit to have the exact same thing happen. And while that's genius on a commercial level, and it's probably going to solve full self-driving, I'm convinced that they are the front runner and only real runner in terms of getting full self-driving working at a level four, level five type of autonomy, it does sort of mask the fact that we're looking at trillions of dollars to make this happen, right? It's just being diffused into the economy because we consumers are effectively paying for it. But we're not paying for all of it. A lot of the R&D stuff that's going on, I mean, building the Dojo chip, building their current supercomputer cluster, all of that kind of stuff costs you know, mil hundreds of millions to billions of dollars. I don't know exact figures because of course they don't really reveal that kind of stuff, but it's not cheap. <laughs> so all of this stuff costs a ton of money. The same sort of thing when you get to like Google, when they're doing their search and Facebook or Meta now <laughs> as they're doing their work. And of course Baidu and Tencent and other companies in China as well. So you've got these companies who are investing a fortune, like more than kind of almost imaginable amounts of money into this technology to make it look easy and it's not easy. And then of course we've got big pharma and as Kathy Wood talks about, she's very excited about pharma and genomics and all of that and so am I quite frankly. I don't know enough to be a good investor in it but I'm very excited in the possibility partially just because I'm you know a 56 year old person and that would be nice if I could add a couple of decades to my life due to having some genetic breakthroughs before I get too old for that. So that would be really cool. So in a selfish way I'm very very into genomics and into that sort of research. But again you've got companies that are willing to throw billions of dollars at artificial intelligence because the payoff is so high. And absolutely that market that they get, so let's say that a company throws $2 billion at AI for an anti-aging sort of thing and they come up with that and you can take a pill and it takes 10 years off your life. How many people are going to be willing, anybody basically who is able to afford that pill, whatever they charge for it, anybody who can afford that is going to buy it. And of course, that gets into cultural and societal issues of the haves and the have nots, right? So if you're not wealthy enough to afford to have this pill to make you live longer, you live a shorter amount of time. And that's a tragic sort of situation, but that's a, you know, that's a subject for a whole other video. But basically, they will make as much money as they want to on this pill if they can make a pill like that. And if they can use AI to do that and to make it happen faster, all to their benefit, right? It's, a, it's an arms race in the genomics and medical industry. Whoever gets to that point first is going to take the lion's share of the profit. Just like whoever gets to full self-driving first takes the, full, the lion's share of the profit. So we're looking at this sort of thing where there's an arms race going on. And absolutely, I agree that with Kathy Wood that if these companies are able to do this, if they're able to use AI to make full self-driving complete reality, if they're able to use AI to get rid of certain types of cancer or to make us live longer, et cetera. Yes, absolutely, we could be looking at an $80 trillion industry, but I think my points are still quite valid because what we're looking at here is a potential diminishing return, but the more important aspect is it's focusing the research into very, very narrow silos now, right? So there's only so many companies, like just one or two, that can do what Tesla's doing in terms of the amount of money that they're willing to spend on full self-driving AI. And there's only a few companies that are willing to do this kind of thing in biotech or even have the funds to do that in biotech. And universities don't have that kind of funding anymore, which is a, to a large extent where a lot of this type of research comes from. And ideally it would be even cheaper than that where you or I on the street could just buy a computer and we could run some AI stuff and we could be very clever about it and we could come up with solutions that nobody has thought about before. So again, the more democratized, the more people who are playing in this sandbox, the better chance you have of making massive breakthroughs. And that's the problem. And so while I completely agree with Kathy Wood that we're going to see trillions, you know, tens of trillions of dollars of market cap get materialized from all of this, at the exact same time we're very, very much focusing or siloing or pyramiding or whatever it is. It's getting to be fewer and fewer players in this market and that leads to an oligopoly, and not a monopoly, but just a few players, right? So an oligopoly of players in the market and that reduces the potential for discoveries in the future. And so the problem is while we see the commercialization and the market cap go way up and we see the advantages of AI in all of our lives, 
what we're giving up at the same time is the large group of people who are able to play in that field. And we're also, of course, giving up some of our privacy and other rights to these companies at the same time, because the fewer of these companies that are able to do this, the more money and the more privacy and the more things we're going to have to give up in order to get the benefits of those companies. So if you had 100 companies that solve full self-driving at the same time, there would be kind of a race to the bottom in terms of the price for it. And so we consumers would win out because some Somebody would sell it to us for a hundred bucks or something for full self-driving. If it's just a monopoly, if Tesla is the only one in who is able to do it, they will then license out their hardware and software to other car companies and they will make uh, uh, you know, as much money as they want to. Right now it's $10,000 to purchase full self-driving and it could go up from there. So, right, that's great for the company, it's great for us shareholders, but it's bad for society. So in conclusion, I believe that Kathy Wood and I am both right. She's absolutely right that the market cap for artificial intelligence and machine learning is going to skyrocket and it's going to become very, very high. I also believe that I'm absolutely right that we are seeing the end of a golden age of AI. And the end of it, again, comes from the law of diminishing returns, which is you have to throw more and more money to get smaller and smaller results out of it. And at the same time that there are fewer and fewer players because of that massive amount of money who are able to play in this sandbox. And so while the market cap could take off, it's going to be concentrated into very few companies around the world who are going to have all of that money within them. It's gonna become very concentrated within just a few players around the world. And so all of that, you know, $80 trillion is gonna be compressed into a small number of companies, not just industries, but companies who are able to afford to, you know, put up the money to be able to make these kinds of things happen. And of course, we've seen this with pharmaceutical companies overall, right? As it becomes more and more expensive to make drugs and to find new drugs and to come up with cures for things, there are fewer and fewer players and they merge or they're acquired or they go out of business or whatever. And the fewer companies there are, the more money that those companies can charge when they finally do come up with something. So it's a thing where the consumer ends up losing out in the end because they're there are fewer players out there and there's less competition. So again, while these big players like Google and Tesla and Apple and Meta, not Facebook, <laughs> et cetera, are out there and are going to be creating money and making more and more money for themselves, it's going to be a have and a have not sort of situation. So I'm not a stock analyst at all. I'm terrible at it. Believe me, as I say on Twitter all the time, I'm like the worst stock purchaser in the world. But again, I'm too risk averse to do this myself, sadly enough. But what I see if I was more you know, if I was willing to take the risk more, would be to invest in these companies because what's going to happen is they're gonna squeeze out the money from the rest of the world and it's gonna get put into these companies. So we're gonna have these bloated, gigantic corporations that are incredibly wealthy because they've sunk the money into this sort of AI universe. And we're gonna have a lot of other people out there who are losing out because they didn't get involved in that or just simply couldn't afford to do that. And so that's a kind of a sad situation. It can be very good for the people who are shareholders in these companies, but it's gonna be a sad situation, I think, for the world at large. So again, I think Kathy Wood and I am correct, and I think it's gonna be the best of times and the worst of times going forward. So why not end this episode quoting Charles Dickens? All right, I hope you found this episode fun and interesting and thought-provoking. If you did, definitely like it so other people can find it, and of course, consider subscribing for more of this kind of stuff. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon. Thank you all so much. Been wonderful conversations on Discord recently. If you wanna join the club and you wanna join the Discord channel and everything, check out the link in the description. And if you're interested in some awesome merch, check out the link in the description. We've got the TeslaBot T t-shirt, which is super popular these days. Don't mess with Tesla. Lots of other t-shirts, tumblers, mugs, etc. So check out the link in the description and help the channel out. And for those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks, and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200, and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $1,600. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Thank you. And finally, don't forget we are both Tesla and Amazon affiliate. Affiliates. If you look in the description, you can see how going shopping for a solar roof, a power wall, or anything on Amazon helps out the channel. And as always, feel free to ask me questions in the comments or at my email address, which is drknowitallknows at gmail.com. Till next time, bye-bye.